yourself from doing it. There's some people who say, I want to be a writer, I'd like to write. But, but you overcame the most extraordinary odds in order to fulfill this mission of yours. Was there something that you can remember that triggered for you, that allowed you to escape the physical confines of your life as a black woman in apartheid South Africa, confined to Gubilet, forcibly removed by her family, watching your father unable to stop these people moving your family? What was it? Which texts? You know, I don't know that it was text as much as it was just the way my life, um, shall I say, unraveled. If you read um, part two of my autobiography, Forced to Grow, it starts with the line, I was a has-been at the age of 23. This is not a recipe for success, young, young people. 23, my, my, my life is already in the toilet bowl. You need, just need to flush it away. I'm hugely pregnant. So-called husband walks away. I discover that there's another uh, story to that. And being African in South Africa then, you are not a citizen. I wasn't a citizen. There is something called um, Child Welfare Society of South Africa. I don't belong there. I can't go there for my children. It's for white South Africans, Indian South Africans, colored South Africans. So it's me and three kids and not a penny, not a penny. In a way, that was a disaster, but I look back at my life and I, I think in a way that forced me to grow because suddenly there I was with, with nothing. I needed to, to, to find a way of looking after my children. I had parents, my parents, neither one of them finished primary school. I, ha I come from very humble uh, beginnings. But my parents were hands-on parents. They took their duty as parents very seriously. Sometimes I wanted to trade them in for a better set, set of parents, <laughs> not as strict, not as, you know. But looking back, I am grateful because they showed me the responsibility of being somebody's parent. And although my husband walked away, I knew I had the responsibility of raising my kids. And in a way, and I'm not criticizing anybody or anything, I am glad there were no children grants then, there were no child grants then. Because it taught me to look after my children, it taught me to do what every mother and father should do. You have children, you have a responsibility. Nobody conned me into thinking they were giving me help. There was, there was no such help. And, and then as I grew, uh, you know, I, I, that forced me to go back to school. Night schools were closed. The government... But, but had, when you were growing up as a little girl, could you, was there anything around you, apart from your parents who were loving and created a home, mm. for that enabled you to dream of being something else? You know, the, my parents, who were not educated, always wanted us to go to school, get a better education. My mom used to say, education to the girl children. Education is the one husband who will never leave you. <laughs> <laughs> and she was right. So when that, my husband that, that abandoned me, I still had my teacher's certificate. Mm. I could go back and teach. But I also knew with that humble you know, uh, qualification, JC, and two years of teacher training, I needed to improve myself if I wanted to, to be employed. That's when I figured. I looked at the school, there are about 17 schools, primary schools in Langa Nyanga and Kugletu then, Lagunya. I looked and there were only two teachers in those 17 schools who had matric. And I figured if I get myself matric, I'll be always in demand. Guess what? I was. <laughs> <laughs>